Uh, we talked last time about the devotional method, and I, we talked about uh, several different things that we do when we're, when we're going through our devotions. We talked about how we pray. We, that's the very, very main thing. And regardless if we're talking about any one of these different uh, types of, of Bible study, if you study geographically, pray, right? If you study um, historically, Pray. You you begin every every event with prayer, I believe, and uh, so do that all the time. When we when we seek the Bible, when we're looking in here, we need to pray. I mentioned we need to pray with confidence. We need to pray with confession, and then pray with consecration. Uh, I mentioned uh, partaking is very very important. You have to actually read the Word of God. People want to grow in their spiritual lives. It's like saying, I want to grow physically and not eating. You know. I want to I want to get bigger and stronger and never eating. It doesn't work that way. So you need to partake the word of God. Uh, thirdly, you need to ponder on what it is you've you've read. If you're not meditating about the things that you've read, it's going to be in one ear, out the other. We hear that all the time. It was in one ear, out the other. So pondering is like that stopping place right in the middle when we're actually able to add some interpretation to it. Think about what it means. Think about what it means. And tonight we're going to talk a little bit about that when it comes to character. Think about what it means. Don't just, don't just race through this. This is, uh, this is Bible study. And there's too many people that go to Bible college, they get the education, or they get the degree, but they don't get the education. So don't just read through the Bible to just move through the content. You want the, you want the concepts. You want that to be in you. So Take time to ponder. And then uh, fourthly, practice. Uh, we have to practice what we preach. Don't just uh, be meditating about it, thinking about it, right? You don't want to just say, Lord, help me at, to, to, to learn these things. And then you begin to uh, partake. You read the Bible and you get it in you and you meditate on it and then you just leave it alone. Uh, what good is that, right? So you want to apply the things that you've learned. So that's what we talked about last time. That's the devotional method. Tonight we're talking about the character study. Character study. This is Bible study methods, part two, character study. This is probably one of the most fascinating ways to study the Bible. It takes you all over the scripture, and uh, you get to deal with a lot of different things. This is very similar to what we're doing in our Sunday morning uh, service, a character study, somewhat. And, uh, and in, in order to grow in Christ-likeness, we have to learn from... Uh, what other people have done in the past, but the character study is, is, is deeper than that. With this type of study, uh, we are looking into the character of, of people mentioned in the Bible. So really this kind of cuts two ways. So a character study looks at either the, the person's character or the person's conduct. And I want to be very clear about that. That's two different things either the person's character or the person's conduct. One is studying who they are, and the other is studying what they did. Okay, who they are and, and what they did, because conduct flows from the character. I think it's important to look at both. But I think that a study about the conduct should come kind of secondary, kind of as a, as a secondary study. We want to learn about, about who they are uh, one way uh, to grow one, uh, sorry, uh, one way to grow in the Christian life is by seeing uh, other people's character, not just their conduct. You want to learn not what they did, but who they are. And First Peter two two, uh, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. As newborn babes, newborn babes, uh, babies, they they begin to not just see the conduct of other people, but they, they, they start to look at them and then they start to ask questions. The older they get, the uh, kids, young adults, they, they begin to look into, into why it is a person did what they did, right? Why it is they did what they did. And so this is really important. And so the first thing we look at is the why, right? Building character is more important than learning about the Bible characters. I can't say that enough. Is There is a difference between the two. Uh, I, we should want to know who the person 
uh, was, or rather what the person was thinking that allowed them to behave the way they behaved, right? I don't know how many times a, somebody does something, and I've used this as an example in the past, kids, they do something, let's say they've done something stupid, and you say, what were you thinking, right? We know what they did. We want to know a character study is, is not so much what they did, but what they were thinking that got them to do what they did. So I really think that's important. It's about the process. It's, it's the underlying uh, thinking that got them to behave the way they behave. We'll talk about the behavior later. The character is, I want to know what this person is thinking. So the goal in the Christian life, the goal in the Christian life is to, is to be conformed to the image of Christ, right? So we are continually developing and we're becoming more like Christ. But I think the, that we're, the way we're becoming is not, we're not uh, emulating the conduct per se. We emulate the character the character of Christ, the fact that Christ was meek, uh, he demonstrated meekness in a certain way, right? He had humility, et cetera, et cetera. So the goal is, is to be conformed to his likeness and the conduct then comes as a byproduct of that character. The goal in the Christian life then is to be complete. Uh, Matthew 5, 48, Matthew 5, 48. Be ye therefore perfect, that word perfect is the word complete, be therefore perfect, complete, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect or complete. Our goal then is to be complete. Complete how? In the conduct or the character? And if we're, if we're complete in the character, the conduct will follow. Uh, even throughout the discipleship processes, as we have discipleship courses, as we train other people, the whole process is to get the student to look like the teacher. So that's the goal, right? Luke 6, 40, the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect, that's that word again, complete, everyone that is complete shall be as his master which is really kind of a scary thing when you think about it. Because if you're discipling somebody and they don't look the way that you think they should look in terms of their character, they were only following what it is that you've trained them to be. So they, when they are complete, when they are perfect, when they are complete, they should look like the person who has instructed them. So that's uh, Luke 6.40. So we learn the character of people. This is critical in the Christian life. Learn the character. I, I find that a lot of people want to uh, emulate the behaviors that other people emulate. They, they, they want to do something that someone else has done. You all have seen that in churches where if you do a certain thing, you are Christ-like, quote-unquote, right? Just act this way. Just behave this way. And as soon as you behave this way, you are, quote-unquote, complete. That's not true. And essentially, that's just a, a form of legalism. It's, it's, it's a form of trying to get you to modify your behavior so you then behave as you see maybe other people behave, but you're missing something much greater than that. You, you are, in a sense... Uh, following someone else's conduct. You're following someone else's conduct. I'm just want to, I just want to behave the way other people behave. I want to act like that Christian over there might be acting. But the reality is, is if you think like a Christian ought to think, then you'll behave like a Christian ought to behave. So the goal is, is to be uh, uh, transformed by the renewing of your mind, Right? It's, it's not to be conformed, it's to be transformed. It's to have a different way of thinking. And the more that we think differently by doing a character study, not a study of the characters, but a study of character, we can then transform our thinking. Why did this person behave the way they behave? Forget how they behave for just a moment. Why? 
What was missing or what was added to? Why did Christ behave the way that he behaved? Well, Christ behaved the way he behaved because he was God and he was perfect. But when we start to look at other people in the Bible, we have to ask ourselves, why did Peter behave the way he behaved? We, we know that he behaved a certain way. Why did he deny? Not the fact that he denied, and that's a, we can study that character out, and we can say, well, well he denied, and so-and-so was faithless, and so-and-so, uh, uh, you know, uh, Judas was a betrayer, I mean, or not a betrayer, he was a, uh, yeah, betrayer, uh, Peter was the denier, but, you, you know, uh, so, so that's great. We, we can learn about what they did, but why did they do what it was they did? That's the importance of the character study. I want to know why a person believes what they believe, and when I can figure out why a person believes what they believe, it will just follow the, 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 the path of they're going to behave a certain way. Belief, your behavior always follows your belief. Your behavior always follows your belief. So that's the why. Number one is the why. Number two is the how. So how do we do this, this character study, right? And uh, just real quickly, uh, you can either study one character at a time, one person at a time. So, for instance, we can look at, last week we looked at David in our Sunday morning hour. We can look at David and we can say, I want to know some of the characteristics of David. Not what he did, but why he did what he did. I want to know what he was thinking that brought him to that place, right? We can either do that, or we can look at one characteristic at a time. And we're going to look at some of those here in just a second. Now, just a couple words of caution. First of all, some people think that you should only work on one characteristic at a time. I have heard, I have heard people say, I have so much to work on, I can only work on one thing at a time. I, I, have, I, have, I, have, there's, I need to work on this area of my life. I need to work on that area of my life. I need to work on this area. And they say, I can only work on one thing. The reality is, is uh, when you are a child and you are growing physically, you work on many things at the same time. You work on, uh, you work on walking and you work on eating and you work on talking. And they all work, they, they all work together at the very same time. So, Again, this is just a word of caution. I think the best way to work on your character is everything at the same time. And as one character develops in you, there'll be another character that needs a little sharpening, and then there'll be another character that needs a little sharp. Another part of your character needs a little sharpening. I liken it to weightlifting. If you go into the weight room and all you do is work on your biceps, your chest is going to lack. And if you go in and work on just your chest muscles, your biceps are going to lack. So what do you do when you go into the gym? You work on kind of, a, kind of a, a whole body fitness, right? You might do some reps with your arms, and you might do some things with your triceps and biceps and, and your chest, your back, your shoulders. And then everything grows together. We call that proportionally. So people who say, I have so much to work on, I can only work on one thing at a time, I think they're really kind of shooting themselves in the foot. And, and they might get strong in one area, but then they're going to have this, the deficit in the other. You're going to have like a, a little infant baby who can talk really good but can't walk, or one that can walk and doesn't eat very well because they haven't grown all together at the same time. So when you're, doing, when you're working on your character, on your character, on who you are as a Christian in Christ, work on them all at the same time. Okay, that's one word of caution. I think the second word of caution is this. It's going to take some time. So we know that Christ was perfect and he was, he was, he was uh, perfectly meek and all of these things. But it takes time to work on your character. And so I can even give a subset of this and say, be gracious to people who are newborn babes in Christ, desiring the sincere milk of the word that they may grow thereby. Be gracious to them because they're still babes. They're still young and they're still immature in the faith. And if, and if faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, then it's going to take time for this faith to develop in the Christian life. And it's going to take time for, for your faith to grow. And it's going to take time for you to develop character. In 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 3, it says, And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. 
I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. So there comes a time when you can't even handle the, the things that maybe that God is, is showing you. So you know, that's, it's an amazing thing about the Word of God. You know how you'll read something and five years later you'll read it and you'll be like, Man, I never saw that. But it was there the whole time. You just didn't see it. And I think maybe because you weren't ready to see it. I think it takes time. It takes time to say to your, to, as you develop character in your life, hey, you know what? I have a real pride problem. Hey, you know what? I, I, uh, I have an area in, uh, that I've got to work on. Called, it's called laziness. Hey, you know what? I've got an area that needs to be worked on, and, and God will continue to reveal these things as you continue to grow in Christ. So first caution is work on them all at the same time. Don't just say, well, I just got this area of laziness. And if I could just not be lazy. And you forget the total, you forget the, that, you have a, that you have a pride issue. You're almost proud of being lazy, you know? And so you work on everything simultaneously, and everything gets strengthened, to get, strengthened together, just like a child who learns to walk and talk and eat all at the same time. I think a, a well rounded Christian, a well rounded Christian will work on all these character things at the same time. And we're going to have a little talk about some of these areas that we can work on. So this is so these are the two cautions. Number one is uh, is work on them together. Number two is it's going to take time. Okay, now uh, open your Bible to Matthew chapter five, if you will. Matthew chapter five, and we're almost out of time. Unbelievable. Matthew chapter five, and we're going to look real quickly at some B attitudes. B attitudes, and uh, basically verses three to twelve, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Say, or for righteousness sake for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted persecuted they the prophets which were before you in here there is some real amazing things about character let's talk real quickly about some areas of character in the Beatitudes that we can work on. Give me some areas of, of the good qualities here, the positive things that we can grow. Give me some areas of character. Mercy, merciful. Good. What, a, what an amazing quality. What an amazing character. Merciful. That you can, that, uh, being merciful. How many, how many people in the Bible were merciful? Give me, give me a name of somebody who's merciful. Joseph, who else? Okay, Good Samaritan. Who else? Prodigal Father. Okay, David. Good. What else in, in Matthew 5, what is another good character besides merciful? Peacemakers. Be a peacemaker. Good. Who can tell me a verse in the Bible that talks about being a peacemaker outside of, outside of this? As much as lieth in you, live what? Live peace with all men, right? I mean, living at peace. I think of First Timothy 2. I think about praying for those in authority that, that, uh, that we might live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty, I think, right? So we need to pray for our leaders that we might live a peaceable life. That's one great reason to, to pray for our leaders is that we can live a quiet and peaceable life, right? But be a peacemaker. I think of the verse that, um, that God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, now, that's not necessarily with one another, and I think everybody misuses that. I think that the reconciliation happens is between us and God. But nonetheless, there is peace being made, that there's, um, that there's no more, uh, it's called enmity between us and God, right? There's, there's no more a war between us and God, and that goes probably back to Romans 5.1. Um, but, but we need to be peacemakers. I, I think that there is a good lesson here to learn on being a peacemaker, there's an irony because he didn't come to bring peace but a sword, right? 
but at the same time, he's still considered the Prince of Peace. And so how do you reconcile that? We need to be a peacemaker. We need to not be a brawler, right? Uh, leaders shouldn't be a brawler. We shouldn't be fighting. We shouldn't be striving together amongst ourselves, right? We, there should be a, a, a you know, it, 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 it's a verse in, in Psalms about brethren dwelling together in unity, right? I mean, there shouldn't be this, this fighting all the time, and there should be a, a sense of, uh, of, of peace between the brothers in Christ, between uh, the, the saints of God and, and, and other sinners out there, right, that are just like, you know, burning buildings and things like that, to be a peacemaker. Not that we tolerate sin, but that we try to bring peace, right? What other characteristics can we learn from, from Matthew 5? Being meek. Good. That's a good one. Seems to be almost complicated, right? <laughs> and it's really not meant to be complicated. And, uh, of, of course, uh, Christ was the meekest of all. Um, you know, he went even unto the death of the cross, right? I mean, he was, he was the embodiment of meekness, of uh, not weakness, but meekness and humility, and we are called to be humble, um, not thinking of ourselves more highly than we ought to think. Uh, we're, we're, not to be, we're not to be proud and, and arrogant. Matter of fact, in, in, in Luke, it, or it was the one who, uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the Pharisee, it was the publican who smote his chest and said, be merciful to me, a sinner. This man went down to his house justified rather than the other. It was that guy. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the, the Pharisee. It was the guy who said, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. That was the guy that went down to his house justified. And so, uh, that is a great character that we can learn. We can learn meekness. Meekness is not weakness. I think, I think, uh, I think meekness is power under control. I love that. Power under control. Jesus could have just decimated the world <laughs> to just that fast, right? And he did. And, and it, was, it was amazing that he was able to just control himself and say, I'm going to become a servant. Good. What else can we learn? Meekness. That's good. Who, who, who else was meek in the Bible? Moses was meek, right? I think Paul was meek. I think he, he, uh, he, he even, even though he had the ability to boast himself great things, um, he, was, he, was very, he was very meek and, and, and uh, let him that glorious glory in the Lord. It wasn't about me. It was about God. I want, I want God to get the glory. I just want to be subdued, right? And, and, and let God get the glory. I don't want to boast myself of great things. Who else was meek? Anybody? Okay, Joseph. So you got Moses, Paul, Joseph, Abraham, Sarah. I mean, there's, there's so, many, so many more. Mary, Mary, great example. Mary's super meek, right? Good. So let me say, what, what else do we have in, in the Beatitudes here, just real quickly? They that mourn. Yeah. There is a time to mourn. So Jesus, when Lazarus died, he wept. You think there was mourning? Absolutely. I think that there's a time for, for, for mourning. David mourned at the loss of his son. Others mourned. Jacob mourned. I mean, there's so many times in the Bible. I mean, listen, let's face it. You don't want to, you don't want to mourn all the time. That's why Ecclesiastes says there's a time to mourn, right? There's a time to weep. And then there's a time to rejoice. And the Bible says rejoice with them that rejoice and weep with them that weep. And so mourning, there's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and, and I feel like sometimes it's like a taboo, right? Somebody dies and, and they say, oh, it, it'll be okay. Well, it's okay. I mean, they lost their spouse. They've been married for a thousand years, you know? It's Methuselah. Or whatever. They've been married forever, you know? I mean, loss is very real. Blessed are that mourn. Okay, good. What else? Anything else just real quickly? Pure in heart. Wow. Pure in heart. We could, we could sit on this all night long, and I won't. Here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. And we haven't even touched the surface of the verses that I want to talk about. And maybe next week we'll talk about it. Here's what a character study does. A character study will look at people like Joseph, who we named twice, one for meekness and one for being merciful. We will look at things like, or people rather, like Abraham and like Moses, about his meekness. And we'll ask, what happened to Moses? And, and I think uh, uh, Rebecca and I kind of had a conversation because Moses is known for his meekness, but obviously the guy was just, I mean, he had a temper tantrum, right? 
What happened in those times? How do you go from throwing a hissy fit to being a man of meekness? Knowing about their, their character will tell you everything about their conduct. And I think a character study, you can either look at it in terms of people. Let's, let's examine Joseph and what are some of these things. And or you can say, let's find the people in the Bible who were merciful. Who was, who was merciful and who, and who was shown mercy? Who was shown mercy and who was merciful? I mean, you think about, uh, forgive them, Lord, for they're not what they do. Be merciful to me, a sinner, right? I mean, it's God showing us his mercy. And there's just, there's a hundred verses on this. And you can spend all day, you can spend all week, all month, just trying to look at, in, 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 as you study the Bible, about mercy. Mercy is a wonderful thing. And then you've got the other side. You've got, you've, you've, got, you've got grace and mercy, right? I mean, you've got all these things. You can look at it with, within the character itself, the person, or the characteristics of the character. I think that's the difference. It's neat to study a Bible character, but to study the character of the Bible character. Study who they are. Study who they are. How, why were they meek? Who is a peacemaker? But we can talk about Pride, and we can talk about laziness, and we can talk about stewardship. What are some other areas, real quickly, this is the last thing, what are some other areas of study that if you were to study in the Bible areas of character, what would some of those things be? I named a couple. I named uh, stewardship, laziness, what else? Faithfulness, good, I like that. Lots on faithfulness. Contentment, good. Service, good. Service, thankfulness, being thankful. You want the quality, the character of, of thankfulness. You, you want a, a servant's heart, right? You want to be a servant. You want to be content in whatsoever state you are. Uh, whether, 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 you base or whether, you, whether you're base or whether you're bound, right? I mean, you want to be content, be faithful. Good, you don't want to be lazy. This is, the, this is the opposite side of that, right? Uh, honesty and dishonesty, two different sides. Who is dishonest in the Bible and who is honest in the Bible? All right, let's look at these characteristics. What else? Loving, lovingness. Yeah, that's very good. A lot in the Bible, a lot in First John about lovingness, right? Pride, good. I mean, bad, bad, good, bad. I can't even say that right. Correct. <laughs> what else? Dishonesty, right? Yeah, yeah, he, he that is, is, is slothful is brother to him is a great waster, right? I, I mentioned that to, to Phil today because he was being slothful. No, he wasn't. I'm just, but I did mention that verse, didn't I? I did mention that. It wasn't in context of that. It was just something else. But I got a book. Uh, Dr. Dr. Rasmus sent, sent me a book, I don't know, a couple months back. He sent me this book. It's called Character Carved in Stone. It, it, I'll, I'm, I'm going I'm to read it before the, the year's over. And uh, I think. So... Some of these things, that, you know, when you open up the table of contents, just phenomenal. A character is, is what you can trust, right? Good character. I, I, I want to, I if, if, if Samuel, I'm going to use you an example, okay? You got good character. I think you got good character, right? Your mom doesn't think so, but we've had long talks about it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I think you have good character. I can trust someone with good character. If you were like Joel, I couldn't trust you. No, kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm picking on Joel. Growing in Christ has so much to do with growing in character. The more that our character is in line with Christ's likeness, the more our conduct will be just like his. As opposed to imitating his conduct, imitate his character is what I'm saying. That's what we're shooting for. Imitate the characteristics this is the whole thing years and years ago. Not, you know, what would Jesus do, right? The reason he did what he did is because he was who he was. And if we can imitate his character, we'll imitate his conduct. Because the more we're conformed to his image, his character will be more like his likeness, right? So being conformed to that image of Christ has, has everything to do with our, our character. 
it's, it's, it's not talking about what he looked like, whether he had long hair or short hair. He definitely had long hair. No, he did not have long hair. It's about what did he look like on the inside. Who was he? 